So last session we were looking at this um, composite and uh, we had a look at the sky movement and in this session we're going to start looking at birds uh, which is kind of an introduction to uh, rotor splines and particle systems. So uh, that's just the thing we're going to make. Uh, it's a little bird flap animation, just one frame. And then we're going to attach it to this particle system to make that tiny, tiny, sort of little bird shapes there like that. So let's get going. Um, so let's make a new comp and I'm going to paste my little notes um, into place so you can all see them. Right, so these are notes on how to use shortcuts for the spline tool. So let's grab a background node and I'm going to make a 256 by 256 image and I'm just going to drag and drop it into the view to see it. So background node is just a flat piece of color. Uh, we've got black at the moment, that'll do. And then you can see there's an input in here which is from mask. So we're going to grab a polygon mask and we're going to draw the shape of our bird. So with the polygon mask selected and while that has got a cross on it, I can just draw out some points for a bird-ish shape, which I think is just going to be this, like that, and then I can wire that into there and that will cut out my background like that. And if I switch to uh, high quality mode and turn off proxies, then you'll have anti-aliasing as well. Lovely. Okay, so let's maybe just sort this out to make it a bit nicer. So. Um, these are all linear handles at the moment. You can see they make corners. If I drag that and do um, Shift S, make smooth corners. So this can smooth some stuff out. That and that. You can select multiple ones at the same time. I'll try and smooth it all together. Uh, so our bird is a bit fat, maybe. Um, so these are some of the shortcuts I can use to modify things. So if I click on all, click drag and select all the points, you can try some stuff out. So T to twist, and this will rotate around my, mass, my mouse pointer. S to scale, like that. Let's twist back again. And then we've got um, X for that one. Let me just make them a bit longer. And then Y for that one. And S, I'll just scale it back down again. And then also can make a sort of sh this shrink and fatten operation by holding down O. Lastly, if you hold down Alt and click anywhere, it'll move what's ever selected like that, which is quite useful if you're when things start to drift off screen. But anyway, it's, that seems to be okay. It's got quite a pointy nose. Let's make that a bit bigger. Uh, so I'm adding points and I want to do that. So I need to switch from the insert and modify mode to the modify only mode. And I can just click without fear of making extra shapes. If you want to break a spline, hold down shift, I think it's shift, uh, control. Hold down control and move a point. So there you go, that'll do. Um, so that's kind of polygon shapes. Uh, drag a bezier shape in. So polygon shapes have bezier handles like that, and the B spline doesn't just have what's called the limit surface. So it's quite good for making blobby shapes. So this is the limit surface, which is the straight lines, and those are handles. Um, and the curve is inside the limit surface. So we've got six points. Uh, I'm going to turn off and again, set to modify, and I'm going to go to modify only like this. And I need to make sure that I set this to the right size, a custom size of 256. So now we've got a wing and a body. So my wing is a bit big. 
and I can do the same as I did before. So select all those, press S, the scale, and just drag it into place and out to move it around. And then I can connect the two together using that and view the result. Alright, so let's do a bit of animation. And we want 15 frames of animation, I think. So let's just do that 15 and 15. So I'm going to do the wing first. So select the Bezier spine, go to controls, right click here for animation, and click animate. So now we can set our first key. And we want the end to be the same, so let's uh, set another key there. Set key. And let's go to somewhere here. So we're just trying to get the silhouette of the wing. So somewhere around here, it's just going to disappear behind the body. What way did that not animate? So key. Ah, that's why. Let's try that again. So I'm going to remove that, and I'm going to. I clicked on publish, and it's supposed to animate. Uh, so that when when it's correctly animating, it should be green there, like that. So now let's go back again, and make my wing shape on the first frame. Go to the end of the animation, and I'll set another key again. Goes green, that's all good. Actually, I want that to be bigger, more like that. That'll do. Um, so now you can see that I've got an animation between those two, but I need those to be the same because it's a loop. So I click on the spline tab find my Bezier spline here. And these are the two keyframes for the animation, so I'll just fit those to the range. Now I can right click on that and do copy points. Click on that one and do paste points. And now nothing happens because both those keyframes match. Okay, so let's start working on our silhouette. So around frame four I know it's going to pass behind so let's just squish it all down like that and then frame uh, 7 this is going to become the bottom of the wing So we have, if I click on that, you'll see the illusion of it flapping. And then a frame 11, maybe, sort that out. do. They're going to be tiny, so that's, that's pretty cool. Um, so the other thing is we can turn on motion blur. Let's take a click on that. So this little nuke sign makes no sense. Um, it means m motion blur. And let's have motion blur on that. And you can see nothing happens. We need to turn motion blur on here. So this is, these options affecting speed. So when we turn on motion blur, things are going to slow down a little bit. So you can sort of globally affect 
high quality mode and motion blur by clicking on these buttons. There we go, that's better. So the wings are good, our body's a little stiff, so let's animate that as well. So uh, well, when it goes down, we want our shoulders to kind of rise up a bit. Maybe affect the neck a bit as well, like that. So there we go. Uh, we need to make sure that our start and end keyframes match, which I haven't done. So let's go back to the spline editor. For now, I'll choose the polygon mask, which is the body, and. Let's make a keyframe he here or something, and then we can cut and paste stuff together. So, drag select that and right click and we shall copy points. Click on this one and paste points. You see, our body moves back into place again now. And there we go, that's the illusion of the bird flying. Uh, maybe tweak the tail a little. Right. So there we have it, and this is pretty much like rotoscoping, or um, sometimes I use it for animation, but mainly for rotoscoping. But it's quite useful for this little bird animation trick. So we have our loop. Yeah, what time do we have? Twelve minutes. Okay, so that's our looping bird animation, and I think maybe we'll stop the video here, and then the next part we'll go on to um, making a particle system out of it.